66 years ago today, a bill was introduced that if it had passed, would have changed the history of not only baseball, but also culturally and politically, socially, economically, two very different regions of this country. You wanna know what I'm talking about? Well, you better listen to this episode of Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Today's episode is being dropped on the 5th day of February, 2022. And thanks so much for making Locked On MLB your first listen as we're available on all your free podcasts and catchers. Hey, you can follow us on Twitter at Locked On MLB Pod. Same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm on Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Uh, for any of you who followed this show and either this version of the show or the one I did before Locked On MLB, which was called Sully Baseball, I am fascinated by how fragile history is, what we consider reality. The reality that we currently live in is a series of events. It's the equation of a series of events and choices and one thing could happen this way or that way, and it goes down this path or it goes down a different path. It's very difficult to imagine the way the future is going to unfold, but it's also, you could see how delicate our reality is. One tiny decision, think about even in your life, one tiny decision here or there sends you in this direction or in that direction. Well, this is a day in 1956 that a bill was introduced in um, the uh, New York City legislature, that if it had passed and if it had gone through, would have completely have changed baseball, completely have changed uh, so many fan bases and the, the chain reaction of events of what we consider to be normal in baseball today would be totally different. And this current landscape that we have now would seem like this bizarre funhouse version of reality what am i talking about here well let me just go i'm on a site called todayinbaseballhistory.com and list that on this day february 5th 1956 new york city mayor robert wagner and brooklyn borough president frank cashmore sponsor a bill to create a brooklyn sports center authority which will propose a $30 million downtown sports center. Now, it didn't pass. They didn't get the sports center money. The $30 million project ultimately was a bust. And the push that this gave eventually led to the Dodgers moving to Los Angeles. Now, I want you to really think about just the chain reaction of events and what that would have meant. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Dodgers, who currently play right down the five from where your pal Sully is sitting right now in the luxurious locked-on MLB studios in Pasadena, California, overlooking the historic Rose Bowl, that the Dodgers had been playing in Brooklyn. At first, they had many, many different names, and they settled on the Dodgers. And they settled in the Flatbush area of Brooklyn in the mid-1910s. Charles Hercules Abbotts was the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers and bought a tremendous amount of land not too far from the Brooklyn Botanical Garden in a place that was nicknamed Pig Town because of a garbage dump that was there. And the person who ran the garbage dump had a lot of pigs living in the garbage dump area that would eat a lot of the trash. New York was a little bit different back then. 
anyway, he bought a ton of land. And from that began to build what was at the time a state-of-the-art ballpark, Abbott's Field, named after himself. Back then, they did that. I kind of missed that. What was the, I mean, Wrigley Field is the last one to do that. Turner Field, where the Braves played for a while, was named after Ted Turner. I, you know, I like that you had owners naming their Colossus after themselves. Comiskey Park was that way. Connie Mack Stadium was that way. Uh, Kaufman, no, Kaufman Stadium. I guess Kaufman Stadium was one of the last ones. Okay, I digress a little bit here. Now, it, it was state of the art in the 1910s, but by the mid 1950s, there was a clamoring for a lot of change in America. For there was a lot of infrastructure being built. Back then, infrastructure was something that everybody seemed to embrace. It was important to do. There was a lot of people to put to work. There was a lot of money in our economy. And that's one of the reasons why you see so many public buildings seem to be frozen in the 50s and early 60s, because that's when people were building stuff. But there was always these projects that were being built in the city, but there's also with the invention of the cars and with highways and everything, there was a tremendous amount of urban flight. Now, I'm not going to get into all the sociology there, but the neighborhood of Flatbush, home of the Dodgers, was no longer a place where a lot of people wanted to go. You could read whatever you wanted to that, but the fact of the matter is, the economy around Flatbush it became a place where it was, uh, let me say, all sorts of euphemisms, lower income. How about that? There was more crime there. How about that? All these things that made the, the area of Flatbush undesirable. Now, I find it very interesting that the city of New York knew that teams were starting to look for other homes. This was one of the things, the geography of America had changed in the 1950s. And remember, the National League and the American League, there was no Major League Baseball. There was no MLB at the time. There were two very distinct separate leagues that interacted and worked with each other. But the American League and the National League worked as two autonomous leagues. And when the American League was formed, a lot of times they put their teams in a place where uh, a national team had folded, like Cleveland or Detroit. But a lot of times they're trying to go head to head with the local team. That's why you had Philadelphia had two teams, Boston had two teams, New York had uh, two teams, and Brooklyn had a team. Chicago had two teams. You know, the, that's why there were so, St. Louis had two teams. Did I mention that? Well, the need and the ability for some cities to support two teams started to go away. And there were big cities out west that were able to support a new team. And guess what? We're hungry to become a major league city. And now, you know, this is around the time where cross-continental flights could be done in a day. So the idea of doing uh, games on the West Coast was no longer a pipe dream. So a lot of those teams that were playing in a city where there are two teams Look around and say, why am I going to share this city when I can look elsewhere? And the Braves and the A's were the first two teams to really crack the ice. The Braves said, to hell with Boston. Let's go to Milwaukee. And in Milwaukee, initially, they broke attendance records and were a tremendous success story. The A's moved to Kansas City. There was a completely different story there. But the real rumbling was in New York. Now, remember, they had three teams. The city didn't look like they could support three teams anymore. And the team that looked like was the odd team out with the Giants. Now, how the Giants went from being the model superstar team winning all the championships by the mid-30s to wanting to bolt by the mid-50s is a topic for a different history-oriented podcast. But the Giants were really rumbling to move. And they had a place they wanted to move to. And that was Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis was ready for a team. Minneapolis was big enough for a team. They had a stadium ready for them. And the Giants' top farm team just happened to be in Minnesota. So the move from the Giants to being the New York Giants to the Minnesota Giants would have been a relatively easy move. 
Now, we all know that's not what happened. Again, fragile reality. That would have left New York to the Yankees and to the Brooklyn Dodgers. And the Dodgers wanted out of Ebbets Field. And the city of New York kept pitching this idea of having the Dodgers play in Flushing Meadows, Queens. Does that sound familiar? The Dodgers wanted to have a different setup. And suddenly, this bill was put up. The $30 million proposal for the sports center. What this would have been, this would have been, uh, you know, a basketball arena, all these different infrastructure there, and a baseball stadium, a new, modern, state-of-the-art, domed baseball stadium for the Dodgers to keep the Dodgers in Brooklyn. One of the biggest teams, most star-studded teams in all of baseball would have been able to have the -the state-of-the-art stadium lead the way of a brand new mind-boggling stadium in Brooklyn. Now, it's a safe bet that if they had done that, well, let's just say, friends, baseball history would have been totally, totally different. And speaking of bets, let's talk about bet online. Bet online as you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues its march through the playoffs, right to the big game just next week. Can't tell you what big game, but I bet it's going to be super. Bet online remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. Bet online has up to the minute info on pro and hoops, uh, pro and college hoops. Sorry, <laughs> the National Hockey League, boxing, UFC along with real-time updates on current games. Don't wait to take advantage of the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline is where the game starts. Now, it didn't pass. The opposition to it, spending that money, uh, it fell apart. And with that, the Dodgers basically intercepted the Washington Senators. The Senators the representatives of Washington were looking to move as well. They were sharing their market with the Baltimore Orioles and getting clobbered and the senators stunk anyway. And so they were looking to move out. And the idea of Los Angeles being this fresh new market for them to jump into was way too much for the Washington senators to pass up. And a delegation from Los Angeles tried to wine and dine the senators. And one place where they wine and dine them was at the World Series being played at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. When the O'Malley's, Walter O'Malley, found out that LA representatives were there trying to get the senators, he intercepted them and said, you know what, the senators, they stink. They stink with a capital stink. You can have the Dodgers, Duke Snyder, Roy Campanella, Jackie Robinson, Don Newcomb, all these stars. You could have them instead of a lousy Senators team. And there you go. Well, as it turned out, without the sports center being built and no stadium being built in Flushing Meadow and Ebbets Field falling apart, suddenly, in just two years after finally delivering a World Series title, to the most rabid fans in the borough of Brooklyn, the Dodgers became the Los Angeles Dodgers. And they wound up moving to the LA Coliseum for a couple of years, playing in a weird baseball configuration. The Dodgers did not want to move into the minor league Wrigley Field. Eventually the Angels played there for one season. And they wound up clearing out a neighborhood in the Chavez Ravine, uh, middle-class Mexican neighborhood, which was basically raised. The people thrown out of their homes and the homes leveled to the ground so that Dodger Stadium could be built. For years, the Dodgers could not attract a Mexican crowd because Dodger Stadium represented so much in terms of 
their families and lives being displaced. It really wasn't until Fernando Valenzuela showed up that Mexican Americans here in Los Angeles County embraced the Dodgers. Brooklyn lost the Dodgers. Eventually, the Giants decided to join the Dodgers in California so you could have two teams there. Minnesota didn't get the Giants. They wound up getting the Senators, becoming the Twins. A new Senators team was created who eventually became the Texas Rangers. And that site on Flushing Meadows eventually became the spot where Shea Stadium was built and the Mets were formed originally to be part of the Continental League to take on the American and National League. But eventually the Continental League, the threat of the Continental League forced baseball to expand, including the creation of the Mets. The Mets played in the polo grounds where the Giants used to play while Shea Stadium was being built. The, the site where the proposed sports center was going to be built became the eventual site of the Barclays Center where the Nets currently play basketball. Now, when we come back here, I want you to really, really, and did I mention really think about how things would have been different had the Brooklyn Dodgers stayed in Brooklyn and the other, well, how do I say it? The other dominoes fell the way that they did. It would have changed, as said, Communities on both coasts and the history of baseball would have been a lot different. Now, first of all, I got to tell you that thanks so much for making Lockdown MLB your first listen. We're available on all your free podcasting catchers. And we are also sponsored by, say it with me, folks, Built Bar. Built Bar remains the best tasting protein bar out there. You know what? It's that time of the year where, you know, some of you have given up on your New Year's resolutions. But this year, uh, stick to them. Eat right. Built Bar makes it easy. In fact, it's not even a resolution because you can enjoy eating Built Bars. Have you tried the puffs? Huh? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of the best Built Bar tasting bars yet. I said bars twice in that sentence. That's how good they are. The puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. Huh? They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. They're covered in 100% chocolate. The puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Cinnamony, churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. These are so good. They're going to be your favorite. And all Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. Yes, that includes the puffs. 100% real chocolate, low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bar with these. They're better. Typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Go to Built.com. Scroll down to the macros chart. You'll be blown away. High protein, high calories. Uh, low calories. Whoa, high protein, low calories. High fiber, low carb. Say all that three times fast. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, 17 grams of protein. All right. You can have so many great flavors mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. My personal favorite, raspberry. And for this month, you get white chocolate cookies and cream. What a delicious mad lib that is. They're all delicious. New flavors coming out all the time. If they think a flavor's going to be good, they're going to make it. It'll be delicious, and it'll be good for you. At Built Bar, they are all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know if they pull it off, but they do it every single time. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, let's think about those dominoes, shall we? The city of Brooklyn had its heart ripped out. Indiana Jones of the Temple of Doom style when the Dodgers left. It really was a devastating blow psychologically to that borough. Instead, the Dodgers remain. The Dodgers remain in a brand spanking new stadium with the bones of a championship team. You know, they still had... Think about some of the players who were on that Brooklyn Dodger team. I mentioned there were some aging stars like, you know, Campanella and Newcomb. Jackie Robinson retired before the move to California. But, you know, Duke Snyder was still there. But you also had a young Sandy Koufax. You also had a young Don Drysdale. You had the foundation for the team that went on to win World Series in Los Angeles 
1959, 1963, 1965, and going back to the World Series in 1966. You would have had that great run in the stadium that would become the great tourist attraction. Shea Stadium became a huge tourist attraction. It was a brand new spanking state-of-the-art ballpark. And the team stunk. Imagine a great team in there. The indoor ballpark that became the big craze and sensation in Houston would have been in Brooklyn. You would have had a team that probably was going to go on to win a few more pennants. Now, there would also be no Mets. Now, there would have been a strange sort of uh, divorce for Giants fans. Because what happened when the Giants and the Dodgers both left is Giants and Dodger fans, used to be at each other's throats, kind of united and became one fan base that were the Mets. Giant fans probably would never have embraced the Dodgers, so they probably would have become Yankee fans. Or maybe continue to follow the Giants as they went to Minnesota. Giants would have been in Minnesota. Chances are the Senators would have gone to Los Angeles. And chances are the A's would have moved to San Francisco or maybe Oakland for that matter. You know, even though they're in Kansas City, almost from the start, there were rumors that they were eyeing Los Angeles as a potential landing spot. Well, if the Senators called shotgun, they may take the bait and go to San Francisco. Now, let's think about some of the other things that would have happened. Had the Senators moved to Los Angeles, they were open to the idea of playing in Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field was a minor league stadium that the, the Pacific Coast League Angels played in. It was also used in every single movie that featured a baseball game. Now, if that happens, chances are they don't bulldoze the community in Chavez Ravine. You have the city of Brooklyn having, instead, its heart from its heart being ripped out, having this great sense of pride of this great new dome stadium, which it would have been considered a great new dome stadium. And eventually when the stadium craze hit New York, they would have built a replica of Ebbets Field next to the dome, kind of like how they built a replica of Ebbets Field next to Shea Stadium. I digress. This, if the Los Angeles Senators, or whatever they would have called them, moved into Wrigley Field, Los Angeles, you don't have Chavez Ravine bulldozed. Wrigley Field, Los Angeles, which is not far from the LA Coliseum, probably would have gotten a facelift. And maybe that would have become a beloved ballpark in LA, or maybe they would have found some other place because certainly at the time, there's a lot of places to put a team. Maybe it would have wound up being Anaheim because if there's already an American League team in LA, then they're not going to expand and put the Angels in there. Do they expand and put the, a new National League team in Los Angeles? Have the Los Angeles Angels be a National League team? I don't know, and neither do you, but chances are no. Chances are you have the one team in LA. Maybe a team winds up in Anaheim eventually. If a team is in San Francisco, the A's are in San Francisco, well, they're probably not going to move another team to the Bay Area. So the mess that the Oakland A's are in now would be avoided. Also, chances are they would put eventually an expansion team in Kansas City. Maybe it's a national team. I don't know. But this snowball effect one community in Brooklyn has its heart. One community in Chavez Ravine gets to flourish. The Dodgers get to build a dynasty and build upon the championship of 55 with a brand new team and new influx of revenue. No Mets. What does that mean for the Continental League? The Continental League, which forced the hand of expansion, the initial expansion that gave us the new senators, which were formed after the original senators went to the, the Minnesota, the LA Angels, and the Houston Colt 45s, who eventually became the Astros, would they have forced the hand of expansion as fast as they did if they didn't have the flagship team that the Continental League would have wanted in New York? I don't know. You may have had fewer teams. 
the Continental League really forced the concept of expansion. And it was because of the vacuum in New York that allowed it to take place. If the Dodgers are still there, there's no vacuum in New York. When the Dodgers and the Giants both moved after the 1957 season, the Yankees went on to win the World Series that year, but they didn't see a big spike in their attendance. In fact, in 1962, the Yankees won the World Series. That was the first year the Mets played. They won. They lost 120 games and outdrew the world champion Yankees because the fandom, the void, the vacuum that was there was filled in by the Dodger and Giant fans who were so thrilled to have a new team. There's no LA Dodgers. Sandy Koufax is a Brooklyn legend. Born in Brooklyn, leading to World Series title after World Series title. Good Lord. And chances are the Senators and the A's are the two American League teams in San Francisco and LA. All of this would have happened if the Sports Center bill was passed and the $30 million was spent to build that dome ballpark. It didn't happen. That reality is not real. Or maybe there is a way to see how alternate realities unfold. But it's something I was thinking about that what we consider to be baseball history here in LA, in Brooklyn, in Minnesota, in Kansas City, in San Francisco, all was shuffled around. And if one thing zigged instead of zagging, something would have been very different. And a dynasty would have been built in Brooklyn. But hey, a dynasty is being built right here at Locked On MLB. So thanks so much for making us your first listen as we're available on all your free podcasts and catchers. Hey, why don't you make your second listen be Locked On Bets with the boy Q and expert analysis from Lee Sterling. Talking about how things could have been, would have been, maybe should have been. This has been Locked On MLB for the fifth day of February, 2022. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.